I was meant to be going out tonight, but my mate let me down. So what I'm going to do instead is sit indoors, drink beer and watch a video about the differences between UK and American homes. Because according to this video, there are exactly eight differences. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm going to check it out and inevitably slag it off. Just looking at her face, she's already way too smiley for me. I'm going to flipping hate this. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I am now in London, in the second zone of London, Greenwich Station. Ooh, my borough. That's where I live. And I am just about to go inside a typical British house and we're going to compare American houses to British ones. So if you're interested in watching and seeing the differences, please follow me. Let's go. I'd like to know how she determined what a typical British house is. In this particular instance, I can see she's viewing a terrace house and apologies in advance. I'm originally from North London, so sometimes when I say house, it's going to sound like ass. Don't get them confused. <laughs> Security level 100. We don't always have two locks in UK homes, so clearly this is a bit of a dodge area. I am going to start my tour with a bathroom. And you know what's the most funniest thing? Da -da -da -da. Uh, in Great Britain, you can still switch off light by pulling a string attached to the ceiling, so you just pull it. Hello, light. That's one of the major differences she's noticed between UK and American homes that we can turn a light on with a dangly switch. We also have the switches sometimes on the outside of the bathroom, which is just purely for safety reasons. And again, that's why we have the hangy thing. I've got one in my bathroom. And sometimes I even see that if you want to use hot water when you shower, you also have to switch it by pulling something from the ceiling. No, 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 no. She's completely wrong there. You do not switch on the hot water by pulling that dangly thing on the ceiling. That inevitably switches on the light and the extractor fan, the extractor fan that lets out all of the steam and the condensation when you're having a bath or a shower. In old houses is that there is a separate tap for hot water and separate tap for cold water. And this tap is extremely hot and this tap is extremely cold. Wow, she could be a bloody scientist. And if you're British, you're supposed to close the sink and then switch on both taps and fill the sink with water. Or what most lazy people do is they switch on the hot water, switch on the cold, and then you just go like that. Da -da 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 -da! British power sockets look like this, and sometimes there is even a switch to switch them on. I don't think I've ever seen something like that in the States. Magic, mate. This is a super peculiar difference, but I noticed that... Who made the decision when they were shopping for toilet seats? Oh, you know what? This design here, this will go amazingly well with our colour scheme. At toilets. Oh god, that's disgusting on the floor as well. Look at that. I don't think they're pissing anywhere but the floor in this house. Now we're going to a typical student room. There's her stalker. Something I wanted to highlight. Uh, something I've seen in Great Britain. So in America, we open windows like sliding them from left to right. Here, you open them out in the street. It depends what home you're bloody in. There's sash windows. There's ones that slide like that. There's ones that pull out like that on hinges. There's ones that pull out that way. As I said, British people really save energy and you wouldn't see this thing working. This is the heater. Uh, but if you want to switch it on, you just, I don't know, select five in winter. Don't get me talking about heating. I have watched enough videos about heating and how to optimize heating than is humanly possible. That is not how you turn on the heating. That's just how you control the temperature of the radiator. To turn on the heating, there will inevitably be a thermostat or you switch it on on the main boiler control system, combi, combi control system. That's just controlling the flow of the water through the radiator. If you want any more DIY stroke heating knowledge, then contact me or in the comments section and I'll be happy to oblige. I've even got a video about how to be more efficient with your gas and energy usage. Yes, I'm an absolute saddo. What British people do, they would just provide you with a really cool blanket. They call it duvet in Great Britain. That's absolute bollocks, mate. Um, we do have heating. We do turn it on, believe it or not. We're not that stingy. Yes, the current economic cost of living crisis and the energy um, inflationary prices in the last few years have made gas and electric extremely expensive, but we do turn it on from time to time.
he definitely knew she was coming around because otherwise he'd probably have Pornhub open on that browser screen. Carpets everywhere, well almost everywhere on the stairs so you don't fall down. We do like a bit of carpet in the UK, it must be said. Personally speaking, I'm not fond of these modern new build homes which are just surrounded in vinyl, laminate or wooden flooring because it makes it feel cold and echoey and having carpet in certain rooms such as the, the bedrooms or in the stairwell, it just adds warmth and dampens the sound and if you're a hairy dude like me, it hides all of the pubic and body hairs. By the way guys, the ground floor Da -da 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 -da! which would be the first floor in America. In Great Britain, it's ground floor. The second floor is actually the first floor and the third floor is actually the second floor. So we're like one level up in Great Britain. So the entrance, like where you enter, is actually ground floor. Her insight and knowledge is going to change the world. The ground floor in the UK is actually the first floor in the US. This formulated her eight major differences between UK and American homes. This is groundbreaking. Take a look at the kitchen. They've actually got quite a big fridge freezer for a British home. Usually we would literally have half of that. So they've got an Amer what we would classify as an American style fridge freezer. This is very typical for small apartments to have a washing machine in the kitchen. We've got to cram everything in. So yeah, a lot of the time the um, washing machine will be in our kitchen. We don't have utility rooms as some of you Americans do. This is a device used for warming water. It's called a combi boiler. It's the thing that she says you switch on with that dangly thing which was actually a light switch. Another difference that I've noticed is that in the States kitchen is normally connected with the living room so it would be like a common space maybe separated by a bar table or something else but here kitchen is like a separate room. It, it that's traditionally yes the kitchen and living room would be separate but nowadays a lot of people are going for like open plan kitchen dining rooms because it just opens it up it makes um sort of having parties and guests and things a bit more um, sociable because you can have people in the kitchen while they're sitting in the living room or the dining room and you can all converse and have a laugh and drink wine and champagne and stuff like that. We've got like a bit in between. We've got what we would call a latch, uh, like 60s style latch. So yeah, it's a separate kitchen, but there's a, like a hole, like a window in there with a breakfast bar. So it separates the room. So they are two separate rooms but you can still see through so you can still have a little a bit of banter and i can shout to my missus and go oi can you grab me a beer i don't actually shout things like that she would absolutely kick my ass or alternatively throw the beer in my head if i did that it is not in any way connected with the living room there's the door so it's like extra space. wow personally i prefer <laughs> there's a mate again why can't he just go and sit upstairs and masturbate or something we're in the living room the living room as i said he's back again he's back again why can't he just go somewhere else while she makes this nine minute video as i said it's separated from the kitchen a uh, standard living room what i like about great britain is it's that very normally, bright and if airy you live in, lots of in light coming house, through the window even if it's a semi detached house you will have like a small garden in the back these guys haven't done anything with the garden they are students they are cutting that grass for shit this is the living room all white, really nice. Okay guys, this was it. This was my tour of a British house and I tried to compare it with American house. As a British person, if I was to go to an American home and view your houses, I'm not gonna be commenting on the extractor switch. I'm not gonna be commenting on the fact that my windows push out into the street. One of the key differences I would choose to identify would not be the size of the duvet. This person has probably been to more countries than I could ever imagine, yet when she decides to compare the homes of our two great nations, she focuses on taps and combi boilers. I tell you what, someone buy me a plane ticket, send me off to America, and I'll make a video 10 times better than this one, and I sure as hell won't have some student stalker ruining my footage in the background. But other than that, I thought it was a fantabulous video, and if you've enjoyed this reaction, then kindly give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if you wanna see some more. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. Look after yourselves. Hopefully, I'll see you very soon. Bye for now, people.